Hi there. <laughs> You're in the lab with your mate JJ. I think this is going to be the first video I published this year, so uh, Happy New Year. Best wishes for 2024. Uh, today's just going to be a bit of a, a quick one. I, uh, I, I'm doing the old book segment, which I've now uh, separated from In the Lab with JJ, like main videos. So we do the, we do the old book uh, uh, feature separately so that people who aren't particularly interested in that can skip it. And uh, yeah, so um, I, I also uh, realized recently that in addition to having the old book uh, feature of the show, that I might have a new book feature in the show as well. Um, so the idea will be that uh, if the book's been published in the last 10 years, then it qualifies as a new book. Uh, and if it's anywhere before that, then it's an old book. So I'll just pick uh, technology related books. Uh, the old books, to the extent that I can, I'm going to try and keep them mostly about electronics, but, you know, broadly physics uh, and chemistry and mechanics and, you know, technology broadly. Uh, and the same goes for the new books because I am uh, a professional computer programmer and I'm like an amateur hobbyist electron electronics experimenter. So um, I don't have that many new books on uh, electronics, but I do have heaps of new books on uh, programming and other technology. So uh, as long as you're happy to bear with me that the, the, the content is broadly technology, um, then, then that's what we'll do. I do also have a bunch of books on philosophy and related matters, but I think we'll keep that separate from what we're doing here with the in the lab um, content. I think we're just going to try and focus mainly on electronics and more broadly on just technology. That will include programming, mathematics, all of the sciences. Um, yeah. Um, the, the silly job title for today is Charge Charmer. I'm the Charge Charmer. That's the same as in the previous video. I'm going to try and keep the ID the same for a full set. So uh, when I do an ordinary In the Lab with JJ video, I'll announce the old book and I'll announce the new book. And then I'll do two follow-up videos, one for the old book, one for the new book. And I'll have the same uh, Charge Charmer or they'll have the same silly job title for all three. Um, and then I'll build a table of things so that everything's there. The In the Lab with JJ, uh, the old book and the new book and the silly job title, and it'll all be a full set. Um, so that's the uh, that's the ambition there. Also, I want to do um, I want to do the XM ones. And when I say XM one, uh, I've got 10 in one, 30 in one, uh, 60 in one, 130 in one, 200 in one, 300 in one, and 500 in one project kits, um, and a few extra ones. Um, I, I want to, um, I want to start getting through those. I, I forget, I counted, I think there's more than 1,500 projects all up. There's heaps of projects to do. Um, so it will literally take me years to get through them. Uh, but I thought I might start on them and I'll be working on them over here. This area is called the booth um, and it's got two cameras, including a camera um, that uh, that I can show you in the in the book. So um, that, might be, that might be something to look at. And I don't know whether I should start the XM1 projects and just go through them from the beginning in order or if I should randomly pick them out one at a time. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. And if I do go through them one at a time, should I start with the 500 in one and work my way back? Or should I start with the 10 in one and work my way forward? Uh, this is something I've been considering. I think what I'm going to do is just start with the small 10 in one and then just do those 10 projects in the order that they come. Uh, then go to the 30 in one and then to the other ones uh, so that we get to the 500 one in one eventually in like 10 years time. Now the 500 one's cool because it actually comes with a, a microcontroller and you can program it using assembly instructions and buttons on the board. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that, that's something to look forward to in, in a couple of years from now when we finally catch up to it. Um, but unlike the old book segment and the new book segment, which are going to be with every normal video, um, I don't think I'm going to have a, an XM1 segment as well. Uh, so uh, the XM1s will just happen randomly from time to time, uh, at the moment anyway, until maybe we figure out what our routine is. <sighs> I actually, I'm in the process of um, doing a very small amount of editing on uh, a video I made yesterday. Um, it's... Uh, uh, Elliot's Extras video. It's a second channel video. I, I made this um, USB breakout cable. Um, so I'll be publishing that soon. After I publish this, I'm going to publish this first. I'm just recording this right now, by the way, because it's 4.30am uh, on Friday morning and the internet has gone down. So I've got no internet at the moment, so I couldn't do my stuff. So I thought I'll just make a video while I wait for it to come back online. Uh, so yeah, I, I, um, I've, got, I've got this. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this again uh, on the main channel and I've already got that planned out here. So this is going to be the, the next USB breakout cable that I do and that'll be in an upcoming video. It'll be the same as this one, which, I'm, which I've already done, uh, but it'll be better because it's informed by all of the mistakes I made when I made this one. Not least of which was I made this one a, a USB type A to a USB type uh, whether these these are mini B mini B, um, which was silly. What I should have just done was uh, type A uh, uh, female in and um, type A male out. So that's what I'll do in the next one when I, when I do this. So I made a bunch of mistakes. I learned a lot of lessons. So when I do this one, I'm going to do a main channel video um, for for the USB breakout thing. Uh, what I'm trying to do is actually run 
um, I, I've got I've got this logic analyzer here, um, and I've got uh, this logic analyzer here. This one I could get working. It's a USB logic analyzer. Most of it's in software. This I got working. Uh, this one I just couldn't get working, and I tried and I tried and I tried. I just couldn't make it work. And I thought what I'd really like to know is what's happening on the wire with this thing when it's plugged in. Like, <clears throat> um, you know, what what what's what is it doing? Is, is it is it you know synchronizing? at all or, or, or what, what's going on. So I thought uh, it would be a good opportunity to have a look at the wire um, and just see what was going on. So I, so I, I intercepted uh, the cable um, that it plugs into um, with a whole bunch of breakout um, headers so that I could clip my, um, my, my logic analyzer onto the, um, onto the cable so that we can have a look at the signal. Now I haven't looked at the signal yet. That's gonna be a whole other thing, a whole other project. And who knows what kind of a can of worms I'm opening here. I kind of suspect it might not even work because the, the frequency might be uh, too high. Uh, this can do 100 megahertz. My main scope can't do better. It's only at 70 megahertz. Um, I can uh, increase this. It's one of those, uh, you know, software enabled things. So it actually has the capacity to go to a few hundred, maybe 350 megahertz or 450 megahertz. It can do, but I need to pay like 5,000 Aussie bucks, like three and a half American bucks, three and a half thousand American bucks to upgrade that to its high speed. And I can't afford that just at the moment. So we won't be doing that. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, as I was saying, uh, uh, four, 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 480 hertz, uh, 480 megahertz is the speed of USB 2, which, uh, you know, is too high uh, for me to analyze. Um, so I'm not sure what to expect, um, but I thought we'd give it a go. We'll just have a look and see what we can see. And um, and we might be able to, if we can snoop on the USB data, we could um, have a look at it and see if we can figure out what it's doing. And we might need to learn something about the USB specification, or we might need to learn everything about the USB uh, specification. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I'm doing is I'm, I'm building a cable so I can look at the USB data. I guess the other thing we could do is we could use, uh, like, a Raspberry Pi or something that, that can process at a pretty high speed um, and then do it in software and and, uh, and maybe write some sort of like, I don't know, Ethernet adapter or something, something that can go at gigabits. Um, because obviously you can make electronics that go at gigabits um, and then and then maybe we could snip that. Maybe we could use a USB 3.0 uh, uh, like sniffer to sniff the, the USB 2 traffic. I don't know, um, but maybe there's something we could do. But it all starts with making a cable and having a look. So that's what we'll be doing on that project there. I've got all sorts of projects in the pipeline. I've got the PCB way um, uh, circuit boards to unbox. I got my second lot of those. I still haven't done my first lot of those, which is the uh, these test clips. So I've got heaps of projects to do. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is supposed to be the old book section, and it's not supposed to take a very long time. So um, let's jump over to the to the bench, and let's have a look at our book, and then we'll be done. And uh, we can catch you in the future for the for the other things that are coming up. So let's do that. Here we are on the bench. It's a bit of a mess because I've got a couple of projects on the boil. This is the uh, the logic analyzer. It's called Hi Let Go. It's a, a 24 megahertz uh, logic analyzer with eight channels. Um, but I can't make it work, which is so frustrating. Uh, plugged into it here is the. Um, uh, that, that cables the uh, signal generator. I'm just sending a test signal into it. And if you're interested, this is the uh, this is the the other logic analyzer that I have, which is also USB. This one's Kinks log logic analyzer, and it, it's good. It works. So it can do three channels at 100 megahertz, which is actually better than my than my big scope can do. Like so, yeah. And this thing was cheap as chips. So um, I'm pretty impressed with that. I haven't used it yet. Uh, I have got it working though. I've, I've tested the software, and it's uh, it's all functional. Um, so uh, it will work. Um, I don't know if it'll be able to actually read the signal that we'll be sending into it, but if it has enough, if the signal's slow enough and it's less than 100 megahertz, uh, we should be able to see what it is. <sighs> anyway, here's our book. So that's what this is all about today. This is the Vest Pocket Guide to Electrical Testing and Troubleshooting. I tell you, when this book was written, they didn't know anything about a logic analyzer. There would have been no such thing. Probably, I guess. When was it published? Published in 1987. Oh, they would have had logic analyzers by 1987. So the contents of this book <coughs> include, oh, I guess I should tell you who it's written by. It's by John E. Traster. And it was published by Prentice Hall in New Jersey in 1987. And the contents include a preface, then chapter one, introduction to electricity and testing. Chapter two, the metric system. Chapter three, math for electrical engineers. Chapter four, measuring instruments. Chapter five, basic troubleshooting. Chapter six, fundamental electrical measurements. Chapter seven, Gauss meters. Chapter eight, operating power factor and phase angle meters. Chapter 9, Industrial Electronics. Chapter 10, Insulation Resistance Tests. Chapter 11, Calibration and Maintenance of Measuring and Testing Instruments. And then there's an index starting at page 121. So this book's roughly 121 pages long. Shall we read the preface? Why not? It's only one and a bit pages. 
Electrical measuring, testing, and troubleshooting play a very important role in maintaining electrical slash electronic systems of all types. Therefore, engineers, technicians, and other workers who are involved in the maintenance of and repair of electrical systems should have a good working knowledge of testing and troubleshooting techniques. This book is intended to guide the reader through basic electrical principles and units of measurement to help the reader gain a working knowledge of the most useful applications of electrical measuring. To keep this book pocket size, the treatment of some subjects has necessarily been brief, but subjects of greater importance have been dealt with more fully. The various tables and charts have been selected with care, and only those that are most likely to be consulted have been included. The numerous roles and equations are stated as simply and concisely as possible, and their applications are clearly illustrated by the full solution of many examples. Regardless of the testing or troubleshooting job, the chapters in this book provide useful information that will help. Detailed drawings and photos supplement the text, leaving no doubt as to exactly how a job is to be done. The author is indeed grateful to the dozens of manufacturers who supplied reference material and other data so helpful to the task of compiling this book. Their names and addresses are listed elsewhere under the appropriate subjects. John E. Traster. There you go. Introduction to Electricity and Testing. Might as well just read the first two paragraphs. To maintain and troubleshoot existing electrical and electronic circuits and systems, technicians should know and apply modern techniques, have a good understanding of basic testing instruments, and understand the characteristics of electricity. When using any testing instrument, always consider the operator's personal safety first. Know the voltage levels and shock hazards related to all equipment to be tested and make certain that the instrument has been tested and correctly calibrated. This should be done at least once a year. To prevent damage to the test instrument, select a range on meters with different ranges that ensures less than full-scale deflection or readouts in the cases of needle or digital instruments, respectively. Now, when I was going through the contents, I was kind of interested in Chapter 4, Measuring Instruments, on page 22. So, uh, let's jump up to page 22 and see what he has to say about measuring instruments. Several different testing and measuring instruments are in current use in the electrical in industry. Anyone involved in any phase of electrical design or installation should have a good understanding of the basic ones. When using any testing instrument or meter, the personal safety of the operator should be considered first. All right, so we've got a volt ohm ammeter, which these days we basically call a multimeter. Uh, there's a mega ohm ammeter, which will obviously uh, give you high resistances. Um, then we've got phase sequence indicator. Okay, that's interesting. Power factor meter, tachometer, frequency meter, light intensity meter, and electrical thermometers. So he has not listed oscilloscopes, logic analyzers, spectrum analyzers, nothing like that. Fascinating. Well, that's everything there is to tell you about that book, short of reading it from cover to cover. So um, yeah, I'll just throw you back over to the welcome cam, which I guess is also the farewell cam. So, uh, yeah, interesting looking book. I, I think I might uh, have a close look at it myself. And just uh, It's only a few hundred pages, so while I'm waiting for the internet to come back up, I think I'll give it a bit of a read. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and I'll see you in the next video um, for one of our projects. We've got a whole bunch of them, so plenty to do this year. Look forward to it. Bye.